Hey, algebra students, let's look at a couple of problems involving the perimeter of rectangles. And we're going to work them with the GED formula sheet, considering that we're currently working on algebra. So basically, we're going to use our algebraic methods. Find the perimeter of a rectangle with a width of 17 centimeters and a length of 22 centimeters. All right, perimeter is one of the things on the GED formula sheet. Let's go ahead, check it out. So here's the sheet itself, and you're going to see that perimeter is the second section down here. Perimeter of A, and what were we talking about? We were talking about rectangles, so we want the perimeter of a rectangle formula. And that does not say P equals 21, guys. That says P equals 2L plus 2W. Now that we have our formula, as always, when we have a formula in algebra, we're going to plug in any information we know. So let's see, what do we know? First of all, we know that we're finding the perimeter. We are finding P, and so P is going to remain a letter that's going to be equal to, let's see, of a rectangle with a width of 17 centimeters. So we know our W. W isn't a mystery anymore. It's 17. So we're going to plug in 17 where we want to sell W. Now, careful, W wasn't by itself. It was being multiplied by 2. And so I'm going to put that 2 out there with some parentheses to say multiply. And let's see, what else do we know? And a length of 22 centimeters. Awesome. So length is not a mystery either. It's 22. That's also being multiplied by 2. And I won't forget my plus sign. Awesome. I substituted in everything I know and really nice news makes me happy. Take a look at that right hand side of the equation and you'll see that there's no letters left. It's all numbers. And so this is just an example of us having to simplify, perform the indicated operations. It says multiply, we multiply. It says add, we're going to add. And we're so lazy, <laughs> we're going to do it in our calculator. We can type the entire expression in there and it'll handle the order of operations for us. I'm going to type it exactly the way I see it with the parentheses because it's just a good habit because sometimes you guys struggle to know when parentheses and time signs are interchangeable. So if you just type it exactly the way you see it, you'll make less errors. So we see that entire expression is 78. On my other side, all I had was P is equal to. So now I know that P is equal to 78. The perimeter of this shape is 78. And 78 what? Well, let's see, we were going around the outside in centimeters. So this is going to be 78 centimeters. Now, you might say, well, why are we going to do another problem with perimeter of rectangle, Kate? That wasn't that hard. Well, this is the one that tricks a lot of beginning students. So watch carefully. It's similar, but it's not going to end up being the same kind of problem algebraically. Take a look at what I mean. This one says, find the width of a rectangle with a perimeter of 19.4 millimeters and a length of 6.3 millimeters. Now we don't have a formula for width of the rectangle, but we still do have that formula for perimeter because we have the perimeter here that relates length and width, right? That formula perimeter or P equals two L, two lengths plus two widths it features those three variables, perimeter, length, and width. So it can be used to solve for any of them. Now let's plug in what we know. Now this time, you guys have a really, really, really bad habit of just plugging in whatever numbers you see on the right-hand side. So this is what a lot of students will do, and this is wrong, by the way, so that's why I'm writing it in red. They'll just say, oh, hey, a couple of numbers. Let's plug those in and find the perimeter. But that's what I'm saying. This kind of a problem is something different algebraically. This doesn't say find the perimeter. In fact, we know the perimeter. So why would you do some P equals to try to figure out the perimeter? It doesn't make sense. This time, we know the perimeter. P should get replaced. P is 19.4. And we know the length. Length is 6.3, so we'll see that 2, we'll see that length get replaced by 6.3. We're still going to see the plus, we're still going to see the 2, but look at what we're finding this time. Find the width. 
W is the unknown. W should be the letter left in the equation, in the formula, which is an equation. If I'm going to use this to solve for W, W should be the letter that I have left. <laughs> So this is a little trickier. In the last example, all our numbers were on the same side. Our letter was over there. And so it was easy. I just simplified it in my calculator. But now my letter is not alone on its side of the eagle sign, right? There's some numbers hanging out, which means now my algebra skills have got to kick in. Nice news though, there is a part of this equation we can simplify to make this sucker a little easier. Take a look at just this portion. 2 times 6.3. That's something we know how to do. We know how to do it forwards. We can simplify it by all means. If you can simplify a piece of your equation, do it. It'll make your life easier. So 2 times 6.3 is 12.6. I just replaced this piece of my equation, but there was other pieces. Don't lose them, okay? I need each equation to be equivalent, equal to the one before it, which means nothing gets lost. Sometimes things get replaced, but nothing ever gets lost. So I still have this plus 2w, and I still have this 19.4. And now we can see that we have a two-step equation to solve. Why do I say that? Because there is w, on the right-hand side of the equation with two numbers I need to get rid of, the 12.6 and the two. Now, according to the order of operations, which we work backwards when we're solving, when we're getting rid of math, we work backwards. We need to move anything adding or subtracting with W first. A lot of people will say, hey, look, two is adding plus two. Yeah, it's not adding with W. See how it's shoved against W? It's multiplying. So the number that's adding or subtracting with W is 12.6. That's what I'll get rid of first. I want it to zero out so that it goes away, so that I'll have nothing adding with that 2W. And so I'm going to subtract it away. I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. And let's see what our new equivalent equation will be after making that change. Well, of course, 12.6 minus 12.6 is zero. And if I have nothing adding with my 2w, I just have 2w. And that's the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, it's not a mystery. We were good secretaries. We clearly communicated what we needed to do. So we need to take 19.4, the original left-hand side, and make the change we said we were going to make, which is subtract 12.6 and we get 6.8. I should have written smaller because I need more space here, but you can see W is still not alone. This isn't solved for with until the W for with is all by itself. So I have this two hanging out. In order to get rid of it, I'll do the opposite. Well, it's multiplying, so I'll divide. I can do whatever I want to an equation. To an equation, I can do whatever I want as long as I keep the two sides equal. And so I need to jump across the equal sign and do the same operation with the same number so that the left and the right-hand side will remain equivalent. All right, let's take a look at what happens on the right-hand side. Multiplying and dividing by two are opposites. On the right-hand side, I have W alone, just like I wanted. And that's going to be equal to or equivalent to whatever I get when I do this math. I take the last equation I had and I'll do what I said I was going to do to it, which is divide by two, and I get 3.4. So what is the width? The width is 3.4. So, but this is, of course, geometry. So it's 3.4 something. Let's see the width of a rectangle with a perimeter of 19.4 millimeters and a length of 6.3 millimeters. This is 3.4 millimeters. All right. So probably the biggest struggle for newbie students and for struggling algebra students is to know when do I simplify and when do I work forwards and when do I solve? When do I work backwards on both sides? And it's really all about that equal sign. Am I on the same side of the equal sign? Am I looking at one expression or am I flipping back and forth across that equal sign? That's when I need to start using opposites. Strong work. This is a great skill flexor for both algebra and geometry. I love hitting two big things at once. You guys know how I am. Make sure that on this review, you can really answer all the questions because we want a really solid understanding of simplifying versus solving as we go forward into more complex GED style examples. All right, you guys, happy learning.